Oh 
hearts over to him fully right now. Everything you're holding back, nothing hold back, nothing holding back. Spirit to the Lord. Oh, Brahma, let's stir ourselves up. Oh, we lift you up. Oh, Brahma, Worthy, worthy, worthy you are. We lift it up. come into this valley, this lull. It's because we're waiting on Him. We want to follow you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, our hearts are still before you.
and His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Your love, your mercy, they endure forever. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. He is good today. He is good today. He is good. He is good. Woo! <laughs> he is good. Oh, I have tasted and I have seen. I have tasted and I have seen. Ah. So we come, and we drink of the presence of the Lord, and we see, bless the Lord, we see today in Jesus' name. I thank you, those who have not seen will see today in Jesus' name. Eyes to be opened to the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
of the Lord in this room. We honor the presence of God in this room. You are right here, right now. There are angel voices going up before the throne from this room.
sons of God are waking up. The alarm is sounding, the bells are ringing, the trumpets blowing. Can you hear the sound of angels singing? The spirits leading, the Thank you.
for the Omega, the sound of him, the sound of him who comes, the sound of him who comes. Oh, I'm in love with the lion, I'm in love with the lion, I'm in love with the lion. I'm in love with the lion. Sons of God waking up. The bride. 
there I'm feeling like they're those of us are saying you don't understand what's going on in my life you don't understand I'm confused I don't know which way to go things don't look like there's any way out but I just read this you know David said I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread in 2 Corinthians Paul said we but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I think about all the things that David walked through. A son that rebelled against him and tried to take over his kingdom. Uh, Bathsheba wasn't, wasn't one of his better times. But you see him all throughout the Psalms. You see him up, and you see him down. And when he's down, we position ourselves before the Lord in faith. We turn our face to Him. And we walk, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Not by our faith, we live by the faith of the Son of God. And what we're doing this morning, we're positioning ourselves. We're saying there is victory. We are going through. I am going into the promised land. I will inherit the promises of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I will be everything that He says I can be. Consider him. Consider him. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. We have one more song. Worship.
There's no shadow you won't light up, a mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, a lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, a mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. if you'd come. We're going to take communion this morning. We're going to sing just a little bit more of that song as we celebrate the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. But not only that, he rose again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless your name today. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Father. You are amazing, you are amazing, you are amazing. Thank you, Father. As they pass us out, worship team, sing just a little bit more of that. Let's worship God today. Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb. 
night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. This little piece of bread symbolizes the bread of life, the body of Jesus that was broken, that was beaten. Father, we thank you, God, for uh, the sacrifice you made for us, Lord God. You, you redeemed us. You healed us. And Father, we thank you today, and we, we rejoice today, Father God. We enter into this rejoicing and reverently, Lord God, because... This is symbolic of the fact that we have been changed. A body hast thou prepared. Hallelujah. Lord, you paid it for us. We couldn't do it. You did it for us. Father, we take this bread today and we bless it. We thank you, Father God, that you you have blessed us with your life. And we thank you for being broken that we could be healed. Father, we receive this now in Jesus' name. Receive the bread this morning. He took the cup and he said, this is, this is the blood of the new covenant. This little cup, symbolic of the fact that Jesus shed his blood. When we take this, it's not just a routine thing we go through. What we're saying is, Lord, when we receive these elements, we're saying we're all in. We are dedicated to you. We are, we are committed, Lord God. We don't hold back. This is our life is your life. Your life is our life, Father God. We thank you that we are in Christ, of Christ, through Christ. And Lord, we thank you for the fact that you shed your blood to pay the price for our sins. And Lord, you cry out, Your blood cries out new and better things for us. Covenant between you and the Father that we have been adopted into. And we thank you, Father God, that you have adopted us in. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you for this cup. We bless it. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, for restoration, healing, and your presence in every person in this house today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Receive the cup today. Hallelujah. Mighty is our God. Thank you, Father. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Brother Colin come to me a minute ago and said he feels there's a change in the atmosphere and that the Lord is raising us up and those ceilings that have held us back are no longer there to hold us back. We are breaking through. Amen. Hallelujah. Breaking through the glass ceilings of that this world has put on us, that our minds have put on us. But hallelujah, he has given us the ability to break through because he's the one that is raising us up. Thank you, Father. There is a, I've been saying in the last few days, I was in prayer the other morning and Holy Spirit just began to show me that this, the month of May, is going to be a month of of kingdom advancements. There's going to be some advancement in the kingdom of God. 
in your life. Amen. And it could be a, it, a lot of different things. Advancement means advancing, getting better, moving forward. Hallelujah. It could be breakthroughs in your families. It could be breakthroughs in your finances, breakthroughs in uh, your, your health. But the most important thing is the fact that there is a breakthrough. I'll answer it. <laughs> Most important thing is there is a breakthrough in the presence of God, in the Spirit of God, and um, in this nation, there's going to be some advancements. Now, these advancements hadn't come easy. It's been, it's been fought hard, and this isn't a time to rest. It's not a time to quit. It's not a time to back up. It's a time to pray and press in with the Lord. And uh, because these advancements will not just naturally happen, they come as, as you got to step. If we don't step, it's not going to happen. Amen. So we got we to gotta step forward, and the Lord is leading us in different ways that way. And, and uh, there, this month is going to be, there's going to be all kinds of things taking place not only just in this nation, but in, the, in this area, there's going to be uh, meetings that are going to be taking place and going to be some real breakthroughs, and I just thank God for that. Hallelujah. Oh, if I, if I could just play up here uh, a video of what I've been seeing in my spirit um, this week. God has been uh, just uh, showing me some really powerful things that uh, is taking place and transformations is taking place. Things that are breaking. There are breakings taking place. We, we are living in a time, as la last week, I, I spent time talking about it, and uh, we just did some breakthrough last week. And uh, we're living in a time where the enemy has become emboldened, but his arrogance is always his downfall. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise today. I'm gonna, we're going to send out some mission checks, and I want you to help me bless these. We're sending $500 to Rwanda, which is for the ministry there, Bible school activities. And uh, we will uh, be going over there this month. We booked our flights, and uh, we've tried a couple of times, and through all the restrictions and everything, we've, we've had to cancel twice, but uh, the door, the, I believe the Lord has opened the door this month, we're going we're gonna to get back into Rwanda after six years of not being able to get there, and uh, we're going to see the presence of God and go in and encourage the people of God there uh, that have been shut down and quarantined for over two years, and just wasn't too long ago, they begin to let them out, let them go, and and the churches have uh, scattered, and people have have uh, left, and and so we're going to go over there and just see if we can't pull things together and see see God move in a powerful way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe I believe we can. I believe God's going to ordain this. Bridges for peace. We're sending $100 to Bridges for Peace. We're sending $300 to New Life Asia Outreach. $300 to Teen Challenge of the Ozarks over in Branson West. And $300 to YWAM Houston, Martindale and, and YWAM Houston down in Houston, Texas. Pray with me today. Father, we send these by faith. We thank you, God, that you have, you have ordained Lord God, these ministries, you've ordained the outreaches, and Lord, I thank you that we get to participate by helping lift up their hands and, and bring provision to them. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to visit them powerfully with your presence, your power, and multiply, Lord God, this seed today. And Lord, I thank you for bread, for food, and seed for sowing, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you're wondering how that you give here at Healing River, there's a card machine out in the front. You can give online or these little white boxes back here. You can drop your offering. You got one here and one in the entryway. That's how you give here. 
and thank you for your giving. You are amazing people. Praise God. We, we, we just don't have to try to push and, you know, anyway. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You remember the brother that um, came from, uh, where, where was that? Uh, Jamaica. You guys brought, brought our brother. And he talked about, you know, that God was encouraged him because he was blessed and that he had $200 for his trip and it had been stolen. And before he left here, when he got home, I think he asked, he asked uh, our brother or sister, one, 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 ask one of you, do you have a dollar? And you gave him a dollar. Is that, is that the story? One dollar. He said, do you have one dollar? I said, yeah, I gave him one dollar. He said, he said, there, that's my $200 back. As he left, different ones of you handed him money, and by the time he left here, he lacked one dollar having all $200 back that had been stolen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's just the body of Christ. That's, that's kingdom power right there. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Names are, are important. You know, in, in Western culture, we don't, we don't uh, see it that way a lot of times. We, we name our children by just how we feel they should be named, or a lot of times we don't take it real serious. But God takes names serious. Because he renamed some people in the Bible. You know, Abraham, Abram, which means exalted father. He didn't have any children, but God, his name was exalted father. Well, in the time of God talking to him about he was going to bring fulfillment and give him a son and he was going to make him, you know, a, a man of multitudes of offspring and and it just didn't seem like like that was happening at all and Abraham Abram had to had to be faithful through several things they 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 tried to fix it themselves and and uh you know they got Ishmael and and God said that's not the one I've ordained I've ordained a child that hasn't been born yet and so they had to walk in faith and Abraham struggled with it you know, every one of us would have, and yet Abra, Abram was the friend of God. God talked with him, and, and he was known as the friend of God. And God told him one day, he said, look down, Abram. He looked down, and he said, your descendants will be as many as the sands of the sea, the particles of dirt, particles of dust. And then one time he told him, look up. He said, look up at the stars. Your descendants will be as many as us. So God gave him points of contact for his faith that every time Abram looked down, he saw prophecy. Every time he looked up, he saw, pro he saw the word. And then, he ch then God changed his name from Abram, exalted father, to Abraham, which means the father of a multitude or many nations. And so God was so interested in Abram, Abraham receiving that he gave him all types of things that would encourage his faith until the day that this happened. And we can, you know, we, we're several years down the road. We see how God multiplied and, and uh, all the things that happened. God's word came to pass. But God said, you're, you're, you're known as the exalted father, but I'm going to call you the father of many nations, the father, father of multitudes, multitudes. How many know that the Word of God many times just lives in our heart and it doesn't look like there's anything around us that is saying this Word is going to come to pass? But when God puts a Word in your heart, when, when it is burned into your spirit, you can't, you can't just leave that. You can't just drop that. It lives in you. It becomes part of your DNA. It becomes part of who you are. When somebody tells me that God spoke to them and a month later they can't tell me what it was that God said, I, don't, I, don't, I, I have doubts that that was God. 
Because when God speaks to you, he doesn't just give you a little nudge or insinuation of what he wants. He gives you words that burn in you like a flame of fire, and those words don't quit. They don't go out. You don't forget. If God speaks to you, you simply don't forget what he said. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. When we don't take it seriously, then we lose what it is that God's trying to get across to us. So Abraham, Abram became Abraham, father of a multitude. In, in the New Testament, we, we see, you know, the angel Gabriel coming down and, and uh, the, demanding that, that they name, you know, John the Baptist, as Zachariah name, name him John. You're gonna call his name John. And they said, there's nobody in our family that's named John. And, uh, you know, John, the name John means hearer or hearing. And so God, you know, the angel come down and said, you're going you're gonna to name him Johanan or hearing. And Zechariah didn't quite agree with that. And so the angel said, well, you know, it's probably going to be best that you can't say that, so I'm going to shut your mouth up until he's born, until the day that he's to be named, and because uh, I don't want you talking until it's time. <laughs> Do it again, God. <laughs> oh, did I say that? <laughs> There's a lot of times that I, I think maybe, maybe God ought to just close our mouths up until the promise comes to pass. Because we, we have a tendency to frustrate the plans of God with our opinions and with our words, and, and we don't always follow through with these things like we should. We don't take them serious. But the angel said his name's going to be called John, and then, then when uh, it was time, Zachariah's mouth was opened, and he said, you got to call him John. Hey, Amen. <laughs> yeah, no, no argument here. His name's going to be John. I've had enough of this. <laughs> and his relative said, there's nobody, you know, there's, there's nobody in your family named John. But God decided that he wanted to name this child, this miracle child. He decided he wanted to name him Johannan or the hearer. Then we, we see Simon Peter. Simon was a man full of potential. Jesus saw the potential, but, but Simon had a hard time coming to the place where the potential could be useful. You know, there's a lot of people today that are full of potential. One thing as a pastor for 40 some years, I, I've learned that potential means nothing. It doesn't matter how much potential I see in somebody, it means nothing. Because until potential is applied to purpose, it'll never bring fulfillment. I've got a pickup that the whole back end of that pickup is full of potential. It's full of tools, it's full of parts. There's all kinds of potential there. But as long as it stays closed and nobody opens it that understands how to take the purpose or the potential and apply it to purpose, there will be nothing built and nothing accomplished. God wants to take us and the things that he's spoken and put inside of us, and he wants to apply it to purpose. But how many have I seen full of potential? I have had the, the heartache of watching people that has so much potential in God do nothing because they couldn't discipline themselves to apply their potential to purpose. 
if you've got too much potential and things come easy for you, you will be you will you will have trouble amounting to the thing that you're supposed to do and accomplishing what you're supposed to do because you haven't had to fight for it. But if you have to apply yourself and fight for it, then you're going to follow that thing through and it's going to produce something in your life. Some of the people that, I'm going to get to my scripture here in a minute. Some of the people that have accomplished great things had no ability to accomplish that when they started. Amen. It's happened over and over and over. You know, Reinhard Bonnke touched millions of people in Africa. And Reinhard Bonnke said, I was probably the least, had the least potential of anybody to do this. But he said, I just happened to say yes when God asked me. He said, I'm, I'm the most unlikely candidate and yet we look back now and realize that he, he accomplished amazing things. I mean, Reinhard Bonnke was an amazing man of God, and yet he didn't have a lot of potential. Matter of fact, here in America, it was hard to set up meetings for him because us savvy, educated, intelligent Americans thought that he was a little simple. Because his messages were not deep. They were not theologically challenging. They were very simple. Jesus come to save, heal, and deliver, and that's what he preached on. You bring him into a conference in America, and he preached on Jesus come to save, heal, and deliver. And everybody is sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, we know that. Yeah, we, we know that. We, don't, we know that, Reinhardt. Bless you. <laughs> and yet he would go to Africa. Millions and millions of people would show up at his meetings. The power of God would be displayed and there would be millions saved. There are miracles taking place all over. I have a picture in my office, or I did, I, I've been moving, so I, I took it down, but I, I've got a picture that shows just an ocean of dark-skinned people, and I put that on my wall because God showed me that in my early 20s. He took me on a journey, and he showed me that happening all over the world, and just an ocean of dark-skinned people. Miracles taking place. It was amazing what happened. And yet, Reinhard Bonnke didn't have the potential to be a great preacher. But he took what, what potential God gave him and he applied it to purpose. And he had a purpose from God and that purpose from God manifest to the point that there was amazing things that took place and happened in his life and through his life. Peter had a lot of, he was very outgoing. You know, we, we, see, we see Peter, he, he had the audacity to talk back to Jesus. Jesus said, cast your nets out. He said, hey, listen, you know, we're fishermen. We know this business. We've been fishing all night. Can you imagine his attitude? We've been fishing all night. We, we haven't caught anything. You know, we, we kind of clean it up for him today. But, but Peter had an attitude when he said that. And Jesus, Jesus said, you know, just cast your nets on the other side. You know, just, just humor me. And Peter said, okay, at your word, we'll do it. We'll do this for you. Cast nets on the other side. They couldn't pull the nets in. And all of a sudden, Peter had a revelation. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how God has to get our attention so many times to where we can have a revelation? 
Like the woman of the well when, when she fussed and argued with Jesus until he told her what was going on in her life. And all of a sudden she said, I perceive that you're a prophet. <laughs> we, we become very perceptive at times like that. Amen. <laughs> I told a young lady ministering to at a drug rehab place and I, I was ministering and, and I looked at this young lady and I said, you, you're, you don't even know why you're here. You're just here because you need help and you didn't have anywhere else to go and somebody brought you. I said, you don't believe what I'm saying and you just soon not be here but you're here for a purpose. And I started talking to her, started explaining what's going on in her life. God began to show me things in her life and I began to talk to her. And before long, tears was running down her face. I said, now you understand why you're here tonight. You might not have believed when you walked in, but you know right now God is here and he's talking to you and he knows who you are. He knows what your name is and he wants to set you free tonight because he's pointed you out. God does not have a problem with people that don't believe because he will demonstrate. Amen. Even in a place where they didn't believe, Jesus still performed a few miracles and a few healings. That, that's power right there. Hallelujah. That's power. He said they didn't believe, so he, could, he only was able to do a few, few healings. It's like, <laughs> God, we have hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, that went over hard. <laughs> Are you insulting us? Yeah, pretty much. We're a hard bunch. Amen. Yeah, we've been there, done that. All right, Simon, when Jesus met him, he said, your, your name is no longer going to be called uh, Cephas, we call him Peter, Petros, your name is going to be called Petros or Peter in the Greek, and the name Petros means a mass of rock detached from the living rock, it means a piece of the rock. Jesus was speaking something into Peter's life that Peter didn't even know existed. The things that Peter did, he did not have the potential to do. He had a lot of potential. But he didn't have the potential to do this because he had an attitude. He was rebellious. He was definitely outspoken. Amen. Constantly putting his foot in his mouth. He had to taste his shoe leather, leather in his mouth most of the time he walked with Jesus. Even to the point that one time he grabbed Jesus and shook him. When Jesus said that I'm going to have to give my life, he shook him and he said, that's not going to happen. Can you imagine grabbing God in the flesh and telling him you're not going to, this is not going to happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, you devil. Can you imagine? I mean, Peter went back and he went, some of, some of us resemble that remark. I mean, you know, we went, go back and forth. But Jesus spoke something into Peter and he said, your destiny is to be a piece of the rock. That's your destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now go to with me to the book of Philippians. Chapter 2, start with verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, uncoming in the likeness of men. 
And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. We preached on that a couple of weeks ago. Now the next verse is what I want to focus on today. Therefore, or because of that, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Father of God the Father. Now we just read a declaration from God that is going to happen. Amen. That every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. Everyone will declare that because there's coming a time when all doubt is going to be erased and he is going to be revealed. But today he's revealed in our hearts. And I want you to grab hold of this verse that says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Today we are serving a Savior, a Lord, that has a name that has been exalted. In some, in, in, it was originally Yeshua, but the English term of that name is Jesus. And it means to rescue. It means, it means that to be delivered, to deliver, to rescue. It means Yahweh saves. Hallelujah. We are serving a Lord who has been exalted, highly exalted, above every name that is named the name of Yeshua. If you don't think the name of Jesus packs power, now sinners are always using his name in, in foul language or curse words, and it, it grips, you know, it, it cuts my heart when I hear it, but they don't have a reaction when they do that, you know. I have a reaction. I usually tell them, I'd, uh, you know, don't use my Lord's name like that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Most of the time I'll, I'll tell them, I'll say, look, Jesus had nothing to do with what you just said. Leave his name out of it. <laughs> Amen. I work around construction workers and all that kind of stuff. I know, I know what it's like. I know what they, how they talk, but I also know that I have the ability to talk myself. Matter of fact, it really shuts them down when they get to cussing your real foul mouth. And I just stop and I say, here, let me interpret what you said. And I give them the, I give them the dictionary version of the words they just used. And I said, what kind of insanity and ignorance are you walking in? You can't even understand English. Amen. Precious little thing that I am. I just. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe in taking over atmospheres, not being bound by them. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, you say Pastor, when I walk in, everybody gets quiet. Thank God. <laughs> Don't feel rejected. Feel respected. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the name Yahweh, Yeshua, if you don't think the name of Jesus has power, 
You let a person of faith speak the name of Jesus and it arrests the, the, the attention of everybody around. I mean, it shuts them down. All you have to do is stop and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. And it has a ripple effect in everybody around you. Amen. I was on a car lot one time trying to, you know, looking at a car. This one, I was preaching a revival and, and the old junker was driving was about to fall apart and one of the people in the congregation had a car lot and he said, preacher, you need to come and see me. I said, all right, I'll come see you. I went down there and, and you know, he was showing me different things, looking around and I was out there on the parking lot and this one salesman is showing me around, just brought, he said, he said, preacher, I, I go to church, but I, I know you can smell it. I'm bound by cigarettes. And I said, well, let me ask you, why would you let something that big control your whole body? Amen. Amen. And I said, can it talk? Can it speak? How is it that it has authority over you? He said, I don't know. I said, well, we're going to pray right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, and you're going to be delivered right now. We're out on the parking. There's people everywhere looking at cars. And I, I said, bow your head. He bowed his head. I put my hand on his head. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, power. You nicotine, I command you to come out of him now by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, I began to pray the power of God over his life. And when I finished, I looked up. Everybody in that car lot and on the parking lot was standing like this. Everybody. Why? Because that name has been highly exalted above every name. At the name of Jesus, every name will bow. Every tongue will confess. Hallelujah. This isn't some... This isn't some religion that we've got. It is the power of the Son of God who died on the cross, was raised again, and God highly exalted him above everything. And he has authority in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. He has broken down every stronghold. He has the keys of death and hell. He is the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is king today. This is not some kind of weak religion we're trying to prop up. You don't have to prop him up. You don't have to make excuses for him. Amen. His name has authority. His name has power. And you need to, you need to let people know by your actions, not because of you telling them, but by your actions and by the power you walk in, they need to know that you believe in Jesus Christ and he's Lord of your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> in my bookshelf, I have a big sword that stands and you can't tell how it's held up there. It's this big sword that just stands there about three foot long and it's just standing there. Why? I hung it that way because the word of God is sharp and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And I gotta tell you something, I don't have to prop up the word of God. It can stand on its own. It don't need my help. It can stand on its own. I have the word and the authority of Almighty God. And he, when I speak his word, when I speak, he speaks. And when he speaks, I speak. It's the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has highly exalted him above every name, praise God, every name. There's a lot of names today, amen. A lot of names that get thrown around in the news media. It's supposed to be powerful. But gotta tell you something, there's a name that's above those names. I serve a Lord that his name is exalted higher than Putin. His name is exalted higher than Biden. 
His name is, is exalted higher than Pelosi. I serve a God whose name is above every name. His name is above Trump. His name is above my name. He is the Lord, the Savior. There is no name above his name. Those that bow before him. A lot of these people think that they're really doing something and yet they're pawns. They're just pawns, puppets. Just puppets. Amen. The globalists think that they are just, you know, going to take over the world. I got to tell you something. The creator of this world is laughing at them and saying, what do you think? You're dying. You are dying. Amen. You are rotting flesh. And you think that you're going to take over the world. I don't know what Bill Gates, I guess Bill Gates thinks he's going he's gonna to somehow invent something that's going to make him live forever because he's trying to form this world, you know, to be perfect for him. I got to tell you something, Bill Gates is going to bow before the Lord. He's going to say Jesus is Lord one of these days, whether it's good or whether it's bad, he's going to say Jesus is Lord. The, the globalists that are trying to take over this world will bow, amen. The beast system is what it is, is Antichrist several years ago in India, and I've been saying this for years, Several years ago in India, I was praying for the meeting that night and Holy Spirit interrupted me and began to tell me what was gonna happen. And I've been trying to say this, I've been trying to preach this and, and it's kind of been like deaf ears. And I told him, I said, God told me that he was, the Muslims were gonna be activated to create unrest and to tear things apart and to make people feel afraid and break, they're, gonna, they're gonna be used to, to, uh, to shake and, and tear apart, but they are not the Antichrist. They, they don't serve the Christ, but the Antichrist, they are just simply gonna make a way and bring people into a place of fear where, would they, where people be willing to, uh, to yield to those that say they have the answers. And we're living in a time now where those that say they have the answers create crises so that they can be the savior and come in and save us. And people are so ignorant today that they believe it. They believe it's really happening. And they close their eyes and say, I don't wanna really see what's happening. But Holy Spirit said all they're gonna do is bring unrest and fear so that the beast system can move in. We are living right now in a time where the beast system is moving in. It's already moved into Washington, D.C. It's already moved into London. It's already moved in to the parts of the world. China has sold out. I mean, China represents the beast system they, they, are, they, are, they are the ones behind most of what's happening here. Ungodly, uh, atheistic religion. And, and this is all coming about. It's all coming together. There's a lot of names that are being raised up. But I gotta tell you something. I've read it in the book. I've heard it in the prayer room. I know what name is gonna exalt, be exalted beyond all of these. I know who's winning. I know who's gonna raise up. They, it don't matter what they do. In the end, there's somebody coming riding on a white horse and on his name is written uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And when he shows up, there's not gonna be a fight. They're gonna go down. Satan is gonna be locked up for a thousand years. There's not gonna be a fight. <laughs> Names are important to God. That's why he took this name Yeshua, Jesus, Esue, Ezu. And he highly exalted that name to where today the name of Jesus is still shaking continents. <laughs> Hallelujah. You haven't seen anything yet. Oh, there's breakthroughs coming. Praise God, there's breakthroughs coming. We have went through so many stages in the church in America. Some of them have been a little bit bad. Some of them have been a little bit good. But all of them, 
We, we have such a tendency to take what God does and swing that pendulum clear out of sight. We get completely crazy. And then when we fall on our face, that pendulum starts coming back down. And it swings back over here. Well, I tried that and it didn't work. I got discouraged and let down. No, you didn't. You just, you just, your own ignorance got you. I know we're supposed to blame everything on the devil, but we're not going to do that here, okay? We've had, we've had all kinds of moves. Somebody asked me the other day, why did, why did prayer get so absent in the body of Christ? I said, well, we went through a time of training and teaching on the Word of God. Before that, we, we prayed. We interceded. Every great move of God's come through interceding. And then we got a hold of the Word and begin to realize that, that the Word was powerful. And so a large part of the body of Christ stopped praying and just started declaring. Amen. We didn't need to pray anymore. All we had to do is, is say the right phrases and the right Bible verses, and we had it. And now that thing's swinging back down. And there's a whole bunch of people that's got the word in them that understands the authority of the believer, that understands the power of the word, and coming back down and getting back in the prayer room and getting filled with the Holy Spirit and getting in the glory of God and the Word and the Spirit is getting united and married and we're gonna see an outpouring of the Spirit of God, a powerful release. Because not only are we gonna understand the Word of authority, we're gonna understand the power that backs it up and we're gonna be filled with His Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Praise God, Dad, Dad Hagen would have, would have just, he, he would have whooped some of the people that, that has promoted his teachings. Amen, because he, he was a man that believed in prayer and relationship with God. That's why he, he was successful. Living. He's the only guy I know, I, he, he's the only one I know that lived out what he taught and it just never, it never failed him. Amen. He was never sick. I mean, just walked in that authority. But more than that, he learned that relationship with God early on. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like reading Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth wouldn't allow anything in his house but a Bible. You couldn't bring a newspaper in. You couldn't bring anything in. But I got to tell you something. Smith Wigglesworth knew the presence of the Lord. And he said this. Listen to me. And a lot of people thought he was so ignorant, arrogant. He said, if God's not moving, I move him. If God's not moving, I'm, in other words, what Smith was saying, let me break it down and put it in our vernacular. If the atmosphere is trying to restrict me, I change the atmosphere. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And he did it. Praise God. He would change atmospheres. He was on a train one day and just, and, and got up in the morning and he got up and he went in and washed his face. He wasn't feeling spiritual. Y'all know that everybody doesn't just feel spiritual all the time? He was just trying to wake up. <laughs> you know, I spend a lot of time in the, in the presence of God and prayer and the word, but a lot of time when I wake up in the morning, I'm not singing hallelujah. I'm saying, stay away from me. I need to drink some coffee. Just everybody be quiet. Just, <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is hang on. I'm really carnal right now. I need to get in the spirit. <laughs> you don't want to be around me right now. Amen. Woo. Praise God. Some of y'all just, just, just lost faith in me right there. 
You're supposed to be on all the time. I am not on all the time. <laughs> I love it when we travel around different ministries and different places. Betty and Damon Salisbury has went with us on a lot of bike rides and, and stuff like that. They've traveled over 50,000 miles with us. And, and we go, we'll go places to minister, and people always get, get around and ask them when I'm not around, say, what's he really like? And they usually say, that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we don't have to put on shows. Praise God. <laughs> we, we, we're just who we are. Amen. But we serve a God that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Praise God. He is exalted highly highly exalted his name is above every name that at the name of G how you doing sis you managed to got that prayer cloth praise God God's, God's got you amen God's got you praise God you've been you've been doing what I said praying saying God here you know the thoughts in my head amen praise God you going that thing's breaking off you you're too valuable you're too precious. You're God's daughter. You're too valuable. Amen. God's not going to let you go. And you don't let him go. You hang on to him, okay? Praise God. That's my ADD. I just, I just happened to look at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, God knows us. He knows who we are. He knows how to minister to us. He knows what we have need of. How to, he knows what we have need of. Amen. Sis, God knows you. He knows what's happening right now. He, he, knows, he knows that you need hope right now, don't you? Yeah, you need a touch from God. Yeah. Praise God. You, you've been sitting here. You feel closed off, separated. You feel like, God, I just need, God, do something. Do something. Okay. Praise God, well, he is. Praise God. Your face has just been glowing to me ever since I walked in here. And, uh, and, and God has you. Praise God, God has you, sis. Grab her hand. You guys grab her hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you will not lose. You are not going to lose. You are not going to lose. In the name of Jesus. I break this thing. I break the power of the enemy that's trying to drive her down, trying to pull the life out of her. I break you in the name of Jesus. Command you to stop. Cease. Father, I thank you for your glory and your power. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that this is a vessel, Lord God, that needs to be filled up. And Lord, I just declare fullness over her right now. In, oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You sadness. I break you now in Jesus' name. You will not rule her life. Rejection, loss, you will not rule her life. She serves the exalted Lord, the one that's above every name. And Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Thank you, Father. Glory. Come on. Come on. It's breaking. It's breaking. Thank you, Father. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. There's warmth. There's warmth filling that cold place. Hallelujah. There's warmth. The fire of God's filling that cold place. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God, we break the power of disappointment over her life. Lord God, that, that which others have done will no longer control her. That which she has done will no longer control her. Lord, we cut it off, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, we call it done. We call it done. We call it done. Over. You are canceled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are canceled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Lord is saying to you, sis, I am your partner. 
I am your close friend. Holy Spirit is your close friend. And Lord, I just pray for an open heart. Thank you, God, for an open heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God, for love that she's never understood. Love that she's never understood, Lord. Oh, God. Manifest your love in her heart, Lord God. She's never known it. She's never experienced it, Lord. Fill her heart full of love. Real love. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to say anymore, God, do you know where I'm at? He does know where you're at. Yeah, he, he just used me to show you. Yeah. He does know where you're at. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I want, to, I want you to take her beyond, Lord God, just the tears. Father, I want you to bring her into a time of fullness, a life of fullness. Filled, full, happy, in peace, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Sis, you know God loves you, don't you? Yeah. I tell, I'm, I'm just stopping everything right now just to minister to you. Because God loves you. And he wants you to know that he was not behind the things that were done to you. And his eyes have been opened to you. And he wants to heal all of that pain and all of that discouragement and all of that rejection in your heart. Okay? You just got to simply say, God, you know... You know me, and I receive from you. I receive your love, your acceptance. I will no longer allow rejection to reign in my life. I'm free. I am free. Amen. Hallelujah, free, free in the name of Jesus. Glory, no longer, no, no longer. Hallelujah, no longer. Glory, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Amen, we serve a living God. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna start ministering you guys like I do at these restoration meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just stop and start ministering. Praise God. And go on teaching. Hallelujah. Oh, God's good. God's good. God's good. Thank you, Lord. He is almighty. Brother, give me your hand. Hallelujah. Father, God, I know. I just declare over this man, Lord God, that everything that has come against him, you are coming against that. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that every weapon formed against him is going to fail. And Lord, I thank you, God, for raising him up in hope, in strength, and in understanding. God, I thank you for filling him, covering him, Lord God, filling him with your presence and with your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Disappointment is not, we cannot give the authority of our lives of disappointment, okay? It's not gonna rule you anymore. It's not, of, it's not of God. What is of God is power and love and a sound mind, amen. And that's what God's doing in your life right now. Praise God, I, I feel like God wants to just break some things over your life, some things that, that are trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And you, I know I've met you before. I don't remember your name, but Father, I just thank you. God, the things that are trying to steal, kill, and destroy in my brother right now, in the name of Jesus, I command it to stop. Thief, you are arrested and you are 
bound from this man's life. Holy Spirit, move in like a flood. Like a flood, move in. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Father, I ask you to purify this gift. Consecrate it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love you, man. God, God knows where you're at. Amen. Knows what, he knows what's going on with you. Amen. Hallelujah. He is, he is a restoring God. This world will rip your heart out. People will rip your heart out. And then they'll stomp on it and laugh. That's what the enemy does. But I got to tell you something. God has the last word. If you'll submit to God, he has the last word. Praise God. And he will raise you back up. There is no greater offense to the enemy than for God to raise you back up when the devil thought he had you whipped. Amen. When you get back up. I don't know how many times the enemy thought he had me face down in the dirt and there's no way I could get back up from this. But all of a sudden, the power of God began to move in a corpse. And next thing you know, life starts taking place. And I start moving and then I start getting back up. And next thing you know, right in the face of the one that tried to destroy me, I'm praising and giving God glory. Why? Because he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. I spit the dust of the devil out of my mouth with praise unto our God. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Glory. (laughs) Stand up with me today. Glory. (laughs) Hallelujah. There are breakthroughs for the people of God. We just gotta, we gotta get into them and we gotta say, okay, I'm done with this game, I'm done with this game. I'm gonna get into the presence of God and I'm gonna receive what God has for me. Hallelujah, the authority of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit is coming in power and glory and we are gonna see the children of God are gonna know who they are and they're gonna walk in what God has. Amen, gonna walk in the power of his spirit, glory, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise today. Lord, we thank you and give you praise. Lord, I receive from you for this congregation, Lord, every situation that the devil has tried, God, the the, the strategies that he has been playing against people in this house, Lord God, we reveal the strategies and call them null and void. They are voided in the name of Jesus. And Lord, your strategies, your strategies, your strategies are what we look to in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory. We are, we are going to praise the Lord in a foreign land. The children of Israel said, how, could they, how can we praise the Lord in a foreign land? Well, we're going to praise Him in a foreign land because the kingdom of God is here. Everywhere we walk, the kingdom walks. Everywhere we go, the kingdom goes. We are walking in the Spirit of the Lord God. Hallelujah. And every assignment of the enemy that has been launched against you and against your family. We're going to call it canceled in Jesus' name. Canceled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. I I need... I need some intercessors up here with me right now. Come here. If you know how to pray, come here with me right now. Hallelujah. We, this is the first day of the month of May. God told me this is going to be a month of advancement. And we're going to pray that through right now in the name of Jesus. Month of advancement. 
Even if you don't call yourself an intercessor, if you know how to pray, let's let's pray. Amen. She does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Right now on the first day of the month of May, we're going to see the glory of God this month. We're going to see the advancement of the kingdom of God. Father, we call in the advancement of the kingdom of God today to the body of Christ. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me anoint you with oil, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I speak strength to this heart right now. Healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Strength. Strength. Strength in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare advancement. Advancement to the kingdom of God. Advancement to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory. Power and presence, Lord. Power and presence, Father. Thank you, God, for advancement in the body of Christ. Thank you, God, the prophetic words are coming to pass. We are walking in the fulfillment of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 